Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to be looking at the Jurassic World Dominion tease for the teaser in Fast 9, the extended preview that the official Jurassic World YouTube channel just dropped yesterday. And I know I'm a little bit late on this one, a day late in fact. But uh, yeah, today we're going to be breaking it down a little bit. I mean, there's nothing really, see, there's not really that much to break down, but there's some cool little details and I got my own opinion to share about it. So I'm actually going to play the the teaser right now before we get right into this so i'll see you after the i'll see you after the teaser jurassic world dominion experience a special extended preview only on f9 and imax all right i'm not gonna lie that was pretty hype i mean it's only 15 seconds but it shows not really like too much but it, it shows stuff to get excited about so Let's, uh, let's pop this bad boy at 0 0.25, and we're gonna, actually, is it 0 0.25 or 0 point? No, yeah, 0 0.25, and then we're gonna be slowly analyzing this, so let's get right into it. Okay, so as you can see here, we got, I think, four anklos? Hold on, one, two, three, f wait, one, two, three, four, five anklos right here, and they're nothing to really run home about. They're, they're anklos, like, they kind of look like the Jurassic World anklos, I think. It's kind of weird, because, like, Later on, you'll see a Jurassic World dinosaur that doesn't really look like that. The modern day version, but we'll get into that. And, uh, yeah, and they keep that little, they keep, I'll, I'll play it right here, actually. Alright, so the reason why I'm freaking out about this, right, I'm freaking out about the sound effect of the Anklo, is that it, it shows consistency between all the movies. Now, ever since Jurassic World, they've used, this, I know this is kind of, it's kind of weird to break down, but they've been using the same sound for the Anklos in Jurassic World. Now, I know, like I already said, it's weird to analyze that, but it, uh, it's nice to see, because, like, sometimes Jurassic kind of loses a continuity, like, in the Jurassic World Lagoon. In the first Jurassic World, it's cut off from the ocean, and in Jurassic World, it is connected to the ocean, so it gets crazy. But I like that, because it just keeps the animals consistent, how they act, and it's nice, and it's good to see. Alright, so this is pretty huge, right? If you're not a huge Jurassic fan, or new to Jurassic, you're like, Oh, what? Those are Trinodons. It's not, no big deal about it. But, you're wrong about that. Because up here, or up here is Trinodons. Down here are Quetzals. Now, Quetzals are, like, gigantic versions of Trinodons. They're huge. Like, they are enormous. Like, look at that one walking on the left. It's giant. Look at that guy. He's huge. But yeah, uh, we've only seen two fine dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise so far. I've seen the Trinodon and Dimorphodon, I believe. And it's nice to see more flying dinosaurs or flying, flying reptiles in the Jurassic franchise. Now, this one little concern I have here is that maybe they're probably only in the Cr Cretaceous period of the movie, which is the first five minutes. Maybe even shorter than just five minutes, but... I hope they're in modern day. If they're not in modern day, it's going to be pretty disappointing. But it's cool to see the Quetzals nonetheless, though. Alright, so this scene is pretty cool because you got a little dinosaur, furry dinosaur, eating the gunk out of a Giga's mouth. Now, that is really cool because it reminds me of this kind of stuff where you get birds cleaning out the teeth of crocodiles in modern day. And I really like that because it kind of ties back to Alan Grant's theory of the dinosaurs just turning into birds. And that's cool. It's a cool little detail. And it's it makes sense because like that was a really small dinosaur compared to it and it would clean out the teeth. And you got you know, you got the the relationship like that. So it's cool to see that in this movie. Because it's showing this movie is driving home that these things aren't monsters, they're animals. And that's like a main complaint with some of the movies. For some reason, like on Jurassic World, I was like, oh these they're not Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom. Make some complaints are heard, which was ridiculous. Like, this isn't an animal, it's a monster. My like, god, that is the, they're acting like monsters. It, it's kind of cringy, but yeah, it, they're, they're trying to drive home about the whole they're not monsters, they're animals type thing, and I love that. So, that's why this scene is actually pretty cool. Alright, so here we see the gig again. Oh, now, that's that's really it, I think. <laughs> is there anything else going on? Um, yeah, I think it's just the gig again. Up, it's a hype shot, but here is interesting. This is interesting right here. This is, I believe, an iguanodon, right? I, I, oh, too, ooh, we went too far. I think this is an iguanodon. And I could be wrong, but it looks like a iguanodon. But, all right, so here's where the theories come in, kind of. 
here's my predictions because I haven't seen any of the any of the low res stuff. I have kind of kept myself unspoiled for this. So if you already know this kind of stuff, I'm sorry if I'm going over it. But I think what's gonna play out is that you can see the shadow rising up with this iguanodon looking thing. All right, went too far. See right here, you see the shadow rising up, right there. See, it's rising up. So I think what's gonna happen is this Giga is gonna hunt down this iguanodon, and then the T-Rex is gonna interfere with that. Like, oh no, I want to eat. I wanna, I want that food. That's my food. And then the and the Giga is all like, no, that's my food. And then they're gonna, uh, bah! I think that's what's actually gonna happen. And you know, this actually just shot brings up my next point. The Giga kind of reminds me of. The Indominus Rex. Now I know that's kind of weird, but check it out. Look, you got the horns up here, and I think the horns should be around here somewhere in editing. I don't know, but the horns, the Indominus Rex got that. The, the the facial features, it's got that around here somewhere. Maybe I'm not even on it right. But I think it's white too. It's like pale white. And, and the teeth, the teeth aren't the same though. The teeth are normal dinosaur teeth. The Indominus Rex has some wacky teeth, and it looks like the arms. Oh, it looks like the arms are actually pretty long. Hold on. Yeah, the long it's the longer arms than the carnivore T Rex. So look at the T Rex arms right there. So Yeah, I think that is interesting. So what I think that means is that Dr. Wu actually used a good amount of Giga DNA for the Dominus Rex. Like right here, if you just showed me that, I would think that's a Dominus Rex. Look at the resemblance. Alright, but on the right, as you can see the T Rex has feathers on the top with my cursors. Hopefully you can see because it'd be kinda of embarrassing if you can't. But the T Rex has feathers. Now that's kind of cool because, um, you know, like people are whining about paleontology and is it scientifically accurate? And I don't know if feathers are scientifically accurate anymore. I, I know that might sound dumb, but I heard some sources say that it's they're back to being scaly. So who knows? I mean, paleontologists change your mind every five seconds. So we'll get the spino. But yeah, it looks like the whole uh, speech with Doctor Wu saying that like everything in Jurassic World isn't natural. Because they have to fill in some DNA with other animals. It's true. And I like that. I like how Dr. Wu kind of won the argument there. But, as you can see, the, the face is kind of the same. So Dr. Wu kind of got the face down. I mean, that's pretty cool to see. But you know what? I think that's really it. They fight. And then Jurassic World Dominion. He's like, Jurassic World Dominion. See it in IMAX. Or, not see it in IMAX. Because that's a year from now. But the biggest point is, I want to make here is you got to see an IMAX. There is you cannot just go to your random ass theater and just be like, "Hey, can I uh can I watch the Fast 9?" It's like, "Oh yeah, sure thing." And then you go over there, right? And it turns out that you you can't. You can't. It's over. It's not even there. So like it it, it would be kind of sad if you went to go see Fast 9 and, and then you're sitting there and it's like, "Wait a minute. Did, did they just lie to me? They they didn't even show like what if you what if you go there, right? Sit down. And then it turns out the movie just starts. There is no dinosaurs. There is no enclosed. And nothing. Nothing like that. It just starts. And you're like, oh, damn. I think they just scammed me. But no, you, you got to make sure you see an IMAX. I know like it's kind of hard to get an IMAX theater around you. Or go to an IMAX theater around you. But it is the only way you can do so. So, highly recommend that. But yeah, I think that's all I have to really say about it. I'm just really excited. I really wanted to talk about this kind of stuff. And... Uh, the Jurassic World Dominion videos have been kind of been pumping out lately, so I'm actually gonna have another one coming out soon, which is gonna have a I don't interesting. Okay, it, it has something to do with Isosorna Site B. It'll be interesting to see. So I hope you guys can catch me in the next one, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you later.